Hello beautiful souls and welcome to our goddess reading for today. So the reason I have already got a card pulled out is because I started recording this particular video and the card I've pulled does have some nudity on it and I forgot to mention at the beginning that this deck does have a little bit of drawn nudity so the images do have a little bit of um, a little bit of nudity for those of you who may find that a little bit offensive. So I just wanted to say that up front so I had to start the recording again and I'm going to be using our beautiful goddess alchemy deck. A dear friend of mine created this deck. I'll be using it in every goddess reading for the next month or so I'm so excited I can't I just I'm so excited to share this deck as much as I possibly can because it does have so much magic in it so if you are wanting to have a look at this deck I will link that below but let's get a first card here let's get our first beautiful goddess so we do have the energy of Medusa now Medusa does have a lot of different medicine she has a lot of different meaning there's a lot of sort of really about anything that we've repressed, any part of ourself that we have denied, anything that we have sort of been shamed around or that has been pushed to the external, I want to say the fringes of our consciousness because of how people perceive it, whatever that might be. She invites us to tap into our own inner knowing. She invites us to awaken our own inner sort of intuition and really step into that level of having boundaries. But the message that I'm really feeling strongly called to bring to the surface today is all around this energy of discernment. So that our first word here is discernment. The reason I feel like this is so strong in the collective right now is that there is so much noise. There is so much clutter in the collective consciousness. There is so much misinformation. There is so much uh, just distortion in what is being presented to everybody. And the message with Medusa is to tune into that inner knowing, to tune into what you know as your soul's truth. Really trust in your discernment, but also what I'm really hearing with this as well is boundaries. So making sure you're setting enough energetic boundaries, having that space where you can really, it's almost like giving yourself enough space so you can feel into anything that's coming into your field, any information, any stories, any thoughts that's coming to your field and sit in that energy and ask, is this mine? Is it true? Is it the collectives? What do I know in this? Also, because we are in this great eclipse and Samhain energetic portal, we do have this like very thin veil and when we think about energy like that it means that we have there's even more access to more energy to more I want to say to more veiled energy to more multi-dimensional sort of spaces and that can also cloud your own personal understanding your own personal knowledge because it's bringing in new information that maybe you haven't tapped into before so this is something just to feel into, like, where do you need to have more discernment? And I think we all need that at the moment. We all need a greater level of discernment. We need a greater understanding of what is our truth. And then we also have, obviously, we've got perception. But the other word that I'm really feeling here is this energy of betrayal. And something that I've seen a lot, both in my personal field, in my personal space, there's been a lot of energy around betrayal. And betrayal is one of our five core wounds. It's also part of our witch wound energy that we hold. But I've seen so many people come to me to say look, the betrayal energy they're feeling. They feel like they're being betrayed by close friends. That sister wound betrayal is coming up really strong at the moment. And one of the reasons I feel like this is coming up really strong at the moment is because we are in this season. We are in sour and we are in this like the witch wound portal. And with this witch wound portal that we hold, that we have here, we do start to see a rise of a lot of the collective wounding coming to the surface to be cleared. But in order for it to be cleared, it also can trigger. So really feeling into how is this showing up for me? Where is this betrayal coming from? Why is it existing here? Really taking that in. The other thing I want to share with this just for this moment is I wasn't going to be sharing it in any space, but I'm feeling really strongly I've channeled a practice for our Hecate journey. For those of you who are doing our four-week Hecate journey, it's been an incredible two weeks so far. We've got two weeks to go, and week three and four are going to be the most intense out of the th out of the four weeks. This coming week, we have the witch wound we're working on, and one of the practices I've recorded for that, I'm going to be sharing it in my Patreon community. I will share it in the free tier as well as in the paid tier, so you, but you can see it for free. But the thing that I'm really feeling here is that it will only be shared for a week. The reason is because I need to protect it. So it's still that, that sort of space of it is part of our portal. It is part of this Hecate journey. But I'm just really feeling that 
excuse me, for those of you who really want to connect into that, it's one of the most powerful activations I've channeled for the collective around witch energy. And this is something that's connected to our sacred rage around repressing, around denying, around betraying self, around the sister in betrayal. All of that stuff is coming through in this particular activation. So if you want to check that out, that will be loaded probably by the end of the day and it'll be available for a week. So if you want to check it out, by all means, jump on and check it out in the next week. It's going to be a really powerful practice for anybody who chooses to do it. Let's get to other goddesses here as our support act. I like working with the goddesses in threes at the moment. So really feeling into our main goddess energy and then getting to sort of support act goddesses. We have Kali Ma. Now I think Kali came through in the reading we did the other day. I think she did actually. So false beliefs, fear and destruction. It makes sense she's repeating because we are going through this intense portal where we are having all of this stuff all of this collective consciousness rising to the surface to clear out a lot of these old wounds we are in a season i would say where there's a lot of high trigger energy so if you're feeling more triggered if you're feeling more emotional if you feel that kind of resistance to what is my truth what is their truth if you're feeling resistance into sort of like surrendering and letting go of anything that and it's the, the reason I'm feeling this, it's almost like there's a fear of letting go because I don't know if it's mine or not. It's such an interesting energy because there is so much collective noise. So again, take all these messages as they resonate and connect for you. Not every message will resonate with everybody all the time. Let's get our third goddess here. We have Hecate. Wow. Okay. So I want to say this as well. I love this deck so much because of the medicine that's in it, because of the way that this person has written it. Um, the, author, the, the author's name is Yvette. I can't remember what the artist's name is, but my, my friend is Yvette. And the fact that we have three goddesses here that are actually three of my main goddesses. So th these are three of the dark goddesses that I work with the most, including obviously then Lilith and a couple others. But these three particular goddesses are part of my main six or main eight that I would now say I work with. Um, I love the fact that they're coming through because each one of these are actually showing us to step into our power, to step into our truth, to destroy anything that is not serving, to let go of those false beliefs, to let go of any betrayal wounds, to, to allow yourself to have higher discernment for what is yours, what is other, to allow yourself to step into, to rise into your own sacred power, your sovereignty. It's a deep reclamation. The energy that I was really channeling when I was doing this channel this morning around this beautiful sacred rage energy that we connect to in a few different ways. But for this particular one, it's the sacred rage of all the witches who have come before. And we were working with Hecate. And it's this deep inner sort of reclamation of power, of magic, of gifts, of allowing yourself to step into that, to stop playing small, to stop playing into these old outdated energies that have been so distorted throughout the feminine collective, throughout the feminine current, that frequency of the feminine current. So that's, I find that really interesting that it's three of these powerful, potent dark goddess energies that are all about stepping into your soul's truth and letting go of everything that is not in alignment with that, because we don't need to hold that crap. Okay. Let's see what else we have for these goddesses. What else is coming through here? We're going to pull one for each and then we're going to get a couple extra collective messages. Let's get one. I just want one for each. Kali Ma, what do we need to see for Kali? We have the Queen of Swords cutting out, clearing out. I think the Queen of Swords even came through in the reading we did the other day. I have a feeling with Kali. I just remember seeing, or it might have actually been in the Soul Purpose reading we did, but I remember the Queen of Swords being in reverse. And what I'm really feeling with this, it's, this theme is repeating because we need to be doing it. We need to be stepping into this energy. We're not playing small anymore. We're not playing the victim energy anymore. There is no sort of sidestepping your own personal self-responsibility in stepping into your path, into what your truth is, that you are the co-creator, that you are responsible for your thoughts and your actions and how you show up in the world. So allowing yourself to really see what is my truth here? What is my level of discernment? What is my independence as well? The Queen of Swords is such an independent energy, but the way I'm seeing this with the swords is cutting out, clearing out Call in Kali to support you in clearing out any false limiting beliefs, anything that is ready to be severed, anything that is ready to be destroyed. This is this energy of taking radical self-responsibility for your own thoughts, beliefs, ideas, 
your own energy, really taking that to, I want to say take it to heart, that it is your responsibility. This may seem like a pretty sort of intense or harsh message, but it's actually the truth. It's the truth of what we're here to do. No one else is responsible for your journey but you. No one else is responsible for your thoughts but you. And so we need to take that radical self-responsibility. And the dark goddesses don't let us fuck about. They don't let us shy away and play small and play the victim. They invite us in a very strong way to step into our power and to stop shrinking our light, to stop shrinking back. So... That Queen of Swords energy feels very, very potent right now. Medusa's energy, we have the wheel coming through. So this is our discernment, perception, and betrayal. What I'm seeing here is if you are willing, if you are willing to allow yourself to go into that level of discernment, to go into that level of clearing out, to go into the, that sort of energy of focusing on dealing with fixing your betrayal wound fixing the sister wounding fixing all those things if you're willing to put the work in you'll be met with a i want to say like a blank slate you'll be met with this kind of clear pathway that these psychic not psychic <laughs> karmic cycles that's i don't know how that turned into psychic but karmic cycles are closing out if you are willing to do your part in it what i'm hearing with that is you'll be met where you're willing to go so one of the ways we can sort of see that is, you know, people, we can kind of say we, we get where we are energetically, and I truly believe that as well, but also we get what we're willing to tolerate. If you are willing to tolerate a certain level of energy, of mindset, of whatever it is, then that's what you'll get. So sometimes we actually need to do the work to upgrade our level of tolerance, to change the way we are seeing something or change our energetic connection to it to see that you know what i'm not going to settle for that anymore i'm going to raise my standards i'm going to raise raise that energy up and this is now going to be what i'm willing to tolerate so i feel like for some there's this deep push to really clear out and get crystal clear on what it is you actually want for your life and stop playing in that small energy the dark goddesses don't allow us to play small if we work with them let's have a look here and i've said this before with hecate with Hecate specifically, you follow the path no matter the cost. That is her medicine. That is her message always to me. You follow the path no matter the cost. You burn those paths down. You don't allow yourself to have a second like plan. There is no backup plan. You follow that pathway. You do what you need to do to get to your soul's highest expression. There is so much energy in this like reading as well. It's really, really hard to keep my words, but let's get our Hecate message here. We have the... Ten of Pentacles. So the energy of the void is really, really special. We are in a void right now because we are in the eclipse season. So the eclipse season, when we're in between the two eclipses, it always gives us this kind of void or liminal space where we have the capacity to rethink ideas, to clear out energy, to get really, I want to say crystal clear in what it is we do desire. Like what is your Ten of Pentacles? Do you need to upgrade that? Do you need to upgrade that minimum frequency of what you want your Ten of Pentacles to be. Are you settling for what you think you deserve or settling for what you've already re received or what you think is possible? It, that is, you know, this is all that you are going to be able to receive or are you going to upgrade that energy to say that, you know what, this is actually what I desire for my life and I won't settle for anything less than that. And then Hecate's guidance is then you follow that path no matter what it costs you right? Because if it's your soul's highest path, it will clear away anything that is not in alignment to that, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's a little bit sticky. So are you willing to follow that pathway to get to that upgraded 10 of pentacles? What I'm seeing with this though, as well, is for many and take this as it resonates and connects for you is that it is time for you to do like double down on your energy clearing, double down on your energy activation, double down on your inner work. So that you actually have the capacity to hold higher frequencies, to hold bigger visions, to allow this energy to work through you. And so you become more masterful of your own energetic container, but you need to be willing to put in double the work, double the, the frequency to really allow these shifts to take place, especially while we're in this really beautiful energetic space where we have the potentiality the void is pure potentiality and allow yourself to see that i can dream a bigger dream i can feel into a more expansive energetic space there is more abundance available to me there is more health available to me there is more love available to me there is more of everything available to me if i can energetically be willing to do the work to meet it that's how i'm feeling that so 
Ooh, take that as it resonates. Let's get two more just as general energies here to support us. Some guidance. What do we need to see for guidance? We have the moon. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I just keep hearing the same thing saying, do my eyes deceive me? Do my eyes deceive me? And so again, the, obviously the moon comes through with illusion energy, but also illumination. So it shows you what is true, what is not true. And move beyond what you see in the world, what you can consciously see in the world and move into that third eye seeing, that third eye knowingness. Open up your eyes so you're not looking through the eyes of deception. You're not looking through the eyes of ego. You're not looking through the eyes of fear, but you're looking through the eyes of your higher self and really allow yourself to see what is true for you at this time. What do you need to move through? How are you being guided to actually work with that energy? I'm just, I'm going to say it again. Do my eyes deceive me? Whatever that is, there's a message in that for someone. Do my eyes deceive me? There is something that you think is what's showing up in your field, but it isn't actually truly what is going on. It's like not rose colored glasses because that feels like it is, um, you're seeing things in a more positive lens than it should be. It's almost the opposite. It's like you're seeing things the wrong way and you need to readjust your view, your perception, readjust the lens you're looking through and see it through that higher lens, illuminate the pathway, illuminate what is needing to be seen here. Let's get one more. And we have the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, slow and steady. It's always my energy with this, the Knight of Pentacles, slow and steady. We don't have to do these things in a fast, rapid rate. We can do them with slow intention. We can do them with a lot more discernment, with a lot more integrity, holding on to your authentic truth, like letting, letting go of any of the distorted voices and holding your authentic voice really sitting in that alignment and taking that slow, steady progress. Just because you're moving onto this pathway that is your highest pathway and there is no going back from this, it doesn't mean it has to be fast or rapid. It can still be very slow and steady, but you still need to be taking action. The Knight of Pentacles, it is a slow, steady energy, but it's consistently moving forward. Even if it's just a millimeter a day, you're still moving yourself forward. So what do you need to take out of that reading? What do you need to anchor in? What do you need to let go of? What do you need to work with a little bit deeper? Have you been avoiding your true path? Have you been avoiding letting go? Are you still too deep into the collective consciousness that you can't hear your own inner voice? Take the messages as you need them for yourself today and leave the rest. And that's going to be it for today, I think. And I think that the energy just feels like it's just closing up, which is beautiful because I'm also going to be recording a shadow work practice as well. So take this, what you need, do the inner work that you need to do to support you. Work with the goddesses, work with Hecate, Kali and Medusa. They are incredible goddesses and I have meditations on all of them on our YouTube channel, but I will be sharing this special, very, very special Hecate activation with our Patreon community, but only for one week. So I don't know why that's so strong, but I have to reiterate that only for one week because it is part of this, this journey that I want to protect that for the people who have signed up and who are journeying with that as well. Um, but I'm just being really strongly guided because it's supporting us in awakening the inner witch. And we need to do that. We need to do that now more than ever. The feminine voice needs to be heard. We need to connect into that sacred rage, to hear it, to feel it, to transmute it, to awaken it, to live it, to breathe that energy. So I will be sharing that very very soon so if you want to book a reading or anything like that as well everything is always listed in the description box below sending you so much love divine souls and i'll connect again soon